So yeah, bye bye. All right, and uh, that brings us to the last, but certainly not least, uh, we're gonna have, this is like part demo, part uh, discussion uh, with Joel Jordan from SyncTech. Hey Joel, how are you? Hey, how are you, Matthew? Not too bad, not the too bad. The carbon thing was really cool. I, I know, <laughs> uh, I, I'm impressed. Honestly, I, 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 I would wanna use it, absolutely. Me too, I like know nothing about what they're doing, but I'm going, huh, that's really looks like something I could get my arms around. Yeah, it's pretty smooth stuff, cool. especially for big firms. I've seen some crazy yeah. stuff uh, in terms of processes that are not automated, you know, trackable like that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so how's everything going so far? Good, all good here. So uh, let me introduce you a little bit in Sync Tank. Um, so Sync Tank, I ran into you guys maybe about a year ago, I'd say at least, and I've been following along. Uh, Sync Tank does publish a lot online. Uh, they also do um, uh, events occasionally. I know that you guys did a royalty summit a little bit earlier in the year. Yep. Um, yeah. I would definitely recommend everyone go check out Sync Tank, um, subscribe, check out their events. And Joel here uh, is the founder and president of Sync Tank. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. I know that you guys have some different offerings. Mm -hmm. um, maybe first up, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, you know what led you to founding Sync Tank and and what Sync Tank is. Certainly. Um, yeah. Okay. That's a, a lot of different things, but um, sorry. Yeah, so Think Tank <laughs> is um, basically a software solutions company for creating uh, solutions in the cloud for rights holders and rights users. So that could be music publishers, record labels, distributors, individual artists and production companies, anybody that has a catalog or anybody that uses a catalog that could be broadcasters, um, UGC platforms, um, DSPs, um, you know, all of these other emerging technologies like, um, you know, uh, meditation apps, anybody that's using music, consuming music. Yep. So we have both rights holders and rights um, users um, using our technology. And um, basically it was, it's a workflow um, uh, tool. So you can get mm -hmm. through your entire day, whether you're uh, managing rights, you know, a large catalog or a small catalog of rights, that is your assets, your recordings, what what um, rights do you have? What rights can you do with those depending on you know the different opportunities? Sync Tank's a little bit of a misnomer because it started off fully focused on sync, which was my mm -hmm. problem as a music publisher. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a frustrated music publisher for 20 years going, when am I ever gonna get out of this mess? And then as soon as my wife and I found out we were pregnant, I was like, I've gotta do something to, to be able to, to move my business without being stuck in this chair all day long. I need to yep. be mobile, right? And so I was using, um, you know, Excel sheets and and Dropbox and whatever was available at the time, iTunes for hosting my hosting my catalog. Mm -hmm. And in an effort to kind of get my arms around it, I created a rough draft of what Sync Tank became. And that was basically a website that would allow me to show off my vastness and value of my catalog to would be buyers and sure. understand all of that stuff that I had in spreadsheets. So this made the spreadsheets come alive, make them interactive, um, not only for me, but also for the would be buyers. Um, mm -hmm. So I was actually getting out of my way as the blocker for doing sales. And then mm -hmm. on top of all of the things that I was doing through the interface of the website, um, you know, I was able to check off the list of what I've done for you lately for my writers and my clients, which are, mm -hmm. you know, what have you done for me lately every day? And so I got yeah. a report that said, here's exactly what happened. I searched for you. The searches came up here. Um, pitches went off here for this opportunity for this much money. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was like the stuff that I craved as an artist when I was, you know, looking for a publishing deal sure. a me on ago. So all of this comes from like kind of being frustrated and understanding that visibility is so important. Telling your story straight is important. Keeping track of every move you make. So you show your value and show your, you know, what your worth is to your clients. And then, you know, show, you know, just having, having the, the paper trail of mm -hmm. how these things developed. Um, and then going around when I was going around showing off my catalog people to, to, to partners, they were like, forget your catalog, man. What's this thing? And yeah. Like, oh, dude, you know, like I've been a graphic designer for 30 years. So I was like, this is a design led solution. And I didn't understand that, you know, publishers don't have didn't have this type of stuff at the time. This was 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, YouTube was four years old. I mean, it was not like everybody was racing to figure out the stuff on, you know, technology online. Um, and so I got in really early and got really lucky with a lot of these um, large independents that were very open-minded about um, starting things off correctly and having structure mm -hmm. and process and discipline through which they could manage their catalog. And that's how we kind of won pretty quickly and, and got a cornerstone of really um, enthusiastic clients. 
that yeah. helped me develop it from a simple idea, which was hosting a catalog, managing the data, pitching it to people and understanding what they did with it to this full suite of tools now, which is an all singing, all dancing end to end solution for running a publishing company or a record label or, you know, anybody that has rights and that could be consultants and managers as well. Sure, sure. I mean, that's an amazing success story. I mean, especially to really come from the space and maybe not like Silicon Valley or something know, right? that's like trying to apply something to this space. Yeah, uh, and it's, I think that's why we won. It was where we did really well was because the people sure. can see how enthusiastic we are about it. And it was just me and another guy that was a bassist in my band in college, you know, and he mm -hmm. he was like, I'll build it. And I was like, I'll design it. And, and we got out of each other's way and here we are now. Um, we have another platform. So the first platform is um, assets and rights management. So yep. brand, managing your, your recordings, your data and your, you know, what you can do with that stuff mm -hmm. and then making it visible and interactive. The second platform is all about things that I've never touched in my life. So I'm a marketing guy, you know, so I looked at this as a, a slingshot for, for making my um, life easier. So the second mm -hmm. part of it is what do you do after you've done a license? The first part is pre-license, right? So mm -hmm. you've organized your catalog, you're ready for opportunities, you're doing the licensing through the platform if possible, because that's what the platform does. And then the second time, second thing is you get money in, right? So you get money in from DSPs, from PROs, from, from gigs, from live streams, from all of these other opportunities that are, are now exponentially coming in into play. Um, and what do you do with that stuff? You know, so typically if you're good at Excel, you can kind of live in Excel for, you know, a few years. But what happens when it starts getting more and more untenable, you know, and the, the tide rises, as, as we say in our in our report, which is called Drowning in Data, funny enough. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can actually download and anybody watch, is watching this. You can go to SyncTank.com and download this 30 page behemoth report about everything I'm talking about right now. And um, but to get back to it is basically, you know, once you get all this revenue and you have to split it up to all the, the performers, right, and all the writers. And that's typically fragmented now. It takes like 10 writers to write a hit these days. So, you know, you have to um, keep track of all the data that you can, that you have, um, you know, that would be um, probably a real pain in the butt to do with spreadsheets. And then when you get the sales statements in, you're having, you know, not a hundred lines from selling CDs or selling downloads. You're mm -hmm. talking about thousands of lines of, of statements. So mm -hmm. now getting to hundreds of thousands of lines to trillions of lines. So in the next, I think in the next 10 years, it's been predicted that publishers will have to deal with billions of lines, thousands of hundreds of billions of lines and hundreds of mm -hmm. trillions of lines for PROs, which is mm. how do you deal with that with with old technology or things that are, you know, not um, completely keeping up with the pace? Um, yeah. So, yeah, the royalty management system is all completely new. It's about registering copyrights at all the PROs. So you don't have to go mm -hmm. ad hoc into every single platform every time you, you get a new copyright in. Um, and then also reporting on the royalties that are coming in. So if you have a client that, or 10 clients that are, you're receiving sales statements for, you can simply feed it into the royalty management system, mm -hmm. um, which is called Iris. And it has about 1500 pre-built input statement points for it. Um, so, and if you haven't seen, if we haven't seen it, we really, you can build one pretty quickly with a, with a manager. And, um, and basically that sucks in all the reports, splits it up into the right piles based on the rules and the contracts that you create. Um, and you can understand what your earnings are and show that to your client very quickly without them hassling you every single day. So we've created everything online and everything's web-based so that you can show your work, show, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'll show you a portal in a second that a client can see. Um, awesome. but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's developed from basic thing on my couch to, you know, using it by all these major companies now. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, did you want to do a screen share at all? Maybe, yeah, just to poke around a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, up to, so it's that little with the red line at the bottom. Yep. So it's, it encourages you not to share your screen, and then you go into that. So you all see what I'm doing? Yeah, looks good. Okay, I can't see myself, so I assume I'm in a little thing on the, the bottom or something, right? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. I'll let you know if anything. Okay, cool. So this is something, this is just an example of like Sync Tank, right? So Sync Tank can be modified however you want to make it look. It's, it's completely API based. I'm a graphic designer, so I love making these things look completely unique to brands so that your, um, you know, your assets aren't completely, um, you know, uh, just put on a shelf with the same label as everything else, you know, so the wrapper is really important, just like your business card is really important. The way that you present your catalog could be important. Um, 
sometimes the stuff that the way that it looks isn't important at all. And it's used internally by Warner Music Group, for instance, for just managing their catalog to understand what they can do commercially with it, um, depending on where in the world they are. So, you know, it's not all about sync. It's about can we license this to the, for this opportunity based on the rules that we put into this platform? So not only does it hold data on, um, you know, album releases and track releases and all of the things that typically would live at a DSP. And I'll just give you an example of this is more production music, but I'll give you an example of uh, what I mean by that. This is like an album and you can put as much data as you want on the album. Um, it's an internal private streaming service is the best way to put it. But you can see things like you can play it and add it to a playlist and share it and download it. And I think I can get in here. Let me see. No, I can't. But there's an entire playlist management system over here for um, just you can drag and drop stuff into a drawer in order to um, in order to start building playlists. And you can share those playlists externally, internally. You can understand who's opened it, who's clicked it, who's streamed it, who's downloaded it, who's done nothing. So you don't call everybody. <laughs> you call the people that care. Um, you can run creative campaigns very, very quickly. This is a tune right here. So wherever you are in the world, from whatever device you have, you can do this kind of stuff, right? Show your story, group mm -hmm. versions of tracks together, tag them with all kinds of tags and pills for different things. Um, we also do automated tagging so that when you upload the tracks, you can get a set of data that um, typically human beings are terrible at tagging, which is stuff like BPM and um, moods and instruments and, and stuff like that. So um we kind of combine it with whatever data that you have in your databases or your spreadsheets and we give you a holistic view of your catalog if i were logged in i'd be able to see a lot more but um as a as a super user mm -hmm. but right now i'm seeing what what is just what is displayable um here so also things like lyrics and you know this is all searchable every aspect of this is searchable and um, we also have some pretty cool stuff like when you play the tune, if you get a tune and you want to hear another tune that sounds like that, that sounds like it's some folk or something like that, right? Western, Western style country tune, right? So if I want to find something similar to that, we're actually looking at what the fingerprint looks like, comparing it to other things within the catalog that sound similar. Naturally, the first one's going to be that one because it's the same tune. Um, let's see what this one sounds like. So it's got similar qualities, similar attributes, um, tempo, keys, moods, um, instruments, whatever it may be. It doesn't say exactly what it is, but it gets you in the right ballpark of, of what you're doing. We also have sync to picture tools um, and ways to license automatically. Um, and like I said, the the outward facing bit is completely customizable. So this one's more of a, you know, an actual website that's used to tell a story about who these people are and why you should care and what value it has um, to, you know, potential marketing partners, to potential buyers, whatever. But this really allows both the company and the um, clients to understand what is available. You can also segment it out so that if a broadcaster or a brand wanted to come in and um, see only you know stuff that's available for them, you would only show stuff that's available for them. Um, so this has a different view to it. You can see like the data here that's held um, and what's displayed is entirely up to the permissions that you you give to your your viewers, right? Um, we also have the concept of artist pages. So like if there's an artist page, you know, you can tell, talk about all your artists. You can share all of this stuff very, very quickly with a share button. So all of these things, when people are like, who is this person and why should I care? And can you send me a press pack? You can literally push a button, share their album, share their photos, share their videos, um, and get to the point very, very quickly without, you know, trying to hack something together with song, with um, like a WordPress or something like that. Um, so this is useful for management companies, for consultants that have, clients that they need to um, you know, support in any way because managers and, and consultants are there when the music publisher and the right label are not, when they're out of cycle mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, um, There's always the manager going, what can we do for this, right? What opportunities can we do and how are we gonna be ready when the opportunities arise? What does our mm -hmm. catalog look like? Is it ship shape? Is it up for, um, you know, is it something that we can deliver confidently? Do we have our story straight? Yeah. Um, all of those things. So this look at this thing as a canon, as a way to kind of you put your entirety of your world of music together, understand what's happening with it and push it out. And like, here's another example of a something we did for the NFL, for instance, you know, so they have the same problems that everybody else has, which is what does my music look like? What does it sound like? What rights do I have? You know, can I get to it? Um, so that's it. Right. And it can look like I said, here's one that you know, looks very NFL-esque, right? So, um, you know, these things are completely down to what you want. The Chrome is fun to change, so you can, you know, turn on, turn off and on composer to columns and things like that. Um, but it's like, what do you do with your data? Do you live in spreadsheets? Because that's kind of awful. 
I would rather live in something like this where I actually can actually play the asset alongside of the rights and understand, you know, is this something useful for this creative opportunity or not? Um, and then if somebody's, if I'm lucky enough to get somebody asking me for music, I'm not going to want to then half step it and send it through Dropbox or we send it or something or we transfer or whatever it is that um, has nothing to do with my brand. So this is all about driving your brand, telling your story, being concise, being consistent. That's um, awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And then uh, I was going to ask also about Iris. Yeah, uh, Iris. Which you guys released last year. Yeah, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Sure thing. So Iris was the next step, step in the evolution of Sync Tank because mm -hmm. we were going, all right, we have a lot of these tools wrapped up for, um, for pre-license, which is how do we get to the music? How do we fill out a license? How do we combine, you know, collapse all of these numerous steps to get to the point, which is monetizing that catalog and getting it into the hands of the buyers? Um, well, what happens after that? So that's the royalty part of it. And like I said, um, we, you know, me as an individual, I knew nothing about how royalty process, processing occurs and peeking behind the curtain. It was, you know, absolutely shocking what, what people do um, still um, in this day and age. And then mm. understanding what, you know, the opportunity was, which is there's a, you know, a flood coming of, of, of information that's exponentially, you know, um, growing over the, over the years, the market grows, the data outgrows it. So exponential data problems as the market grows incrementally, we're talking exponential growth mm -hmm. in the data problems. So we basically needed a shovel and our, we saw that our clients needed a really good shovel too. Mm -hmm. And um, we put the word out and I, and our long-term client peer music had come up with a long, uh, had come to us with a, um, a, an offer to, for us to acquire their, their royalty system that they were building over the last decade. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we said, oh my gosh, this is great. Um, and over the last two years, we've rebuilt the, rebuilt it, refactored it, um, made it cloud-based, um, made it fast and, and secure, even though it already was. We brought it completely up to modern day standards and, and uh, made it um, you know, tenable for, for anybody. So for rights managers and anybody that's managing um, income um, or analyzing catalogs for income, this is the tool. Um, it does it so fast and so quick, and it does it through all of these different um, understandings of what the statements should look like. Um, and then we have a ton of little helpers that allow you to um, kind of pull these things in very quickly and match them to the catalog very quickly. It's also integrated with sync tanks. So if you have data updates on one side, it updates to the other side. Um, and yep. you can share data between um, partners. So if you have it here and you have a sub publisher, you can distribute the information synchronous, um, synchronous synchronously rather, excuse me, can't even say it. Um, but let me show you what the portal looks like and we'll, we'll go, sure. we'll, we'll wrap it up from there. This is mm -hmm. basically what the outputs look like from once you've sucked in a bunch of um, statements and the statements typically, you know, you might consolidate a statement in Excel or print out something at the end of the day that, you know, I, myself as an artist, I don't want to get a 50 page document that says, you know, line by line, everything that I've earned, unless I really asked for it. Um, really what I want to see is, is this, like what money did I owed, right? And from where? Yeah. Um, so this is the statement summary that says, you know, you've gotten an advance here, you were paid, paid there and why you still have a balance or, or a negative balance. Then you have the income kind of um, types, right? So the major types, you have mechanicals, synchronization, performance, and so on. And then it will tell you, you know, within digital, where, where did it come from? Mm -hmm. um, you can then look at the digital income. So this might be YouTube or Amazon and, you know, there's mechanicals there, there's performance and streaming and, and all sorts, Spotify, and you can break these downs from, you know, the income sources, the periods, the territories, the whatever. Um, and so this gives like kind of the headline view of what the artist really needs to know and what are my top songs, you know, and where did I earn from them? So if you click on mm -hmm. this, it'll show that digital and sync were the major contributors to this income. And then it will show you exactly where that income came down from. Mm -hmm. um, Anybody can download their own reports, so you're never out left being chasing, um, you know, being chased by a, a writer for uh, data that should be available immediately. So the minute that you update this stuff, you can put it um, into the portal for the for the writer to understand that they've made fifty five dollars from Russia or eighty hundred ninety three from Canada or whatever it is, right? And then they have access to all of their statements over here. Um, you can also put things like compliance forms over here, so you have your W nines and your W eights and stuff like that. And you can look at your song earnings, um, you know, by the catalog. So if you want to mm -hmm. see, you know, there's there's that, and what's done. Um, so this is kind of the hundred foot foot view of the output. Some of the things that we've seen that's really kind of interesting is is um, 
is these would-be copyright owners. So you have a lot of investors coming out of the woodwork now that are buying catalogs up left and right. Um, and they typically have data analysts that are really good at creating pivot tables for, um, you know, uh, analyzing income, right? And when they're doing the due diligence over years and years and years, 10 years, maybe 20 years of income to understand what that should be paid for that catalog or what that catalog mm -hmm. may be worth, and they have all their indicators that they need, every time they have to do that, they have to start with a new set of, of stuff, right? They have, they're given, here's a bunch of PDF files, here's a bunch of printed statements, here's a bunch of um, actual structured stuff. And it might mm -hmm. be that the structure of those data had changed over the decade, right? So you might've started off with a universal statement that looked like this, and ended up 10 years later with a universal statement that looks like this. And you've just created, you know, for that one an analysis of that one thing from that one provider, you know, hours and hours of work for yourself to try to normalize that data. Sure. Um, we already do that. That's what this program is designed to do. And that's why people need computers. Um, so you're not the hero trying to stay up all night, crunching numbers. You're really kind of letting the computer do its thing. And, and it does it so quickly because it's all cloud-based. We can um, boot up as many servers as we need to to support your efforts. This isn't something running on a, an old mainframe, it's running on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we scale up in real time as you're needed. If you're running a large royalty run, uh, you know we simply support it by, by um, adding more servers if need be. Um, and yeah, and the other thing is that we're, you know, we're a white glove service. We're not some kind of, um, you know, this is the other thing about Sync Tank is we're not some service that you sign up via credit card and we, off you go and, and we don't talk to you and stuff. We are your partners in this. We become your tech guys, right? Your tech mm -hmm. company and girls and stuff. And um, you know, we work with all of these publishers and all of these Hollywood studios and broadcast networks simply because we're non-competitive. We're like you know Switzerland in this regard. Um, yeah. We just want everybody to be able to make sense of what they have um, using tools that we've created that I think are super valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and to build this kind of stuff is is very very complex. And now that we've been working on it for over a decade, I think we're really at the tip of the spear on this thing. And, um, you know, we'll keep kind of bashing away at this thing, at royalties and, and all of the supply chain things that are coming to light. Every time you open a door, there's another door behind it, as you know. <laughs> um, yep. So we've been trying to kind of feel our way through with the help of our clients as to what's important to them. Um, and, you know, part being part of the backbone of the tools that are used um, in the music industry is, is really kind of, um, what we aim to be, you know, we're just the, the, the battlefield more or less. Yeah. That's amazing. So you're Switzerland and the battlefield also. We're Switzerland, we're peaceful <laughs> and we let you do the, 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 the battle on, on our uh, land as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, we just don't get involved in your commercial, you know, your commercials. Right. So we're like sure. Microsoft word. We don't take a cut of your book. Sure. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a hell of a platform. It's pretty amazing what you've built. Cheers, man. Uh, I appreciate that. And it's not me alone. Obviously, there's 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I know you have a, a world a, an that, are, um, that are very busy doing this thing every day. And, and um, you know, we have a very busy blog as well. So if anybody's interested in learning about the music industry, we cover everything from soup to nuts, from music publishing to technology and, and all of these different sources of income. And it's all about these other things, not about Sync Tank. So yeah. um, you'll you'll find some interesting content in there from really good writers and and people with uh, you know much more insight than I even have. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm a reader and I read. Uh, we dropped a link because uh, we did a recap of your drowning and data report. So that's in the chat, so everyone can check it out. But uh, thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. You know, it's syncblog.com with an H. And mm -hmm. um, thank you, Matthew. I can't think of anything else to talk about, really, uh, unless you have Q&A or, or anything. But uh, let I me think know. we're good. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk. Uh, I want to catch up with you soon. At, uh, at SyncTank.net if anybody interested yep. in writing me an email. And that's Sync with an H. And thank you to you, Matthew and Ariana, for, for hosting me. Um, looks like it was a great event. Yeah, yeah. We're glad to have you. Thank you very much, Joel. Thanks, you, Matthew. I appreciate All it. All right. Take care, bud. Take care.